and we're live i think late how's it going everybody a little bit late yeah a little bit late so confession from the road <laughs> mm -hmm. um first of all if you're new to our channel my name is dylan and this is leslie and this is music and mascara and uh, 9.30 on Sunday nights, we do a Q&A uh, all about living in an RV, working, doing all the things we need to do, keeping up with all of our responsibilities, which we 100% failed at uh, tonight. Because That's not 100%? Not because 100%. Because we're here. Because we are here. Uh, but we are late. So, um, Hashtag time change is what yes. brought the conversation up. Well, and it's been a weird week. I mean, it really has been a weird week. We, um, so we are in Alabama and we had to survive a hurricane. Not terrible part of a hurricane. It was mostly a tropical storm. Um, but that was weird. So we'll get into that a little bit. If you have questions about that, let us know. The other thing is, she took some time off from work, which doesn't even start till tomorrow. <laughs> this weekend's schedule got screwed up from some other stuff not having to do with anything related to this. We also have an appointment next week for the motorhome, which means we're not traveling on our normal day. That's probably the biggest thing. And then you add the time change into that, and we're like... Oh crap. It's Sunday night. What time is it? Oh. And then my watch. Oh, that's the other thing that screwed us up. You're, you didn't change I'm like, your watch. Yeah, I didn't change my watch time. So, in fact, let's just do that. So, I've been living on um, last. I've been living on daylight savings time all day. <laughs> didn't really think about it. Not really, because we're plugged into the Jeep and your, your no, phone that's, does that's the work true. for you. That's true. I don't think you rely on your watch so much. So that's what our day has been like. And we were just sitting here watching YouTube videos, talking about shooting more videos. We were talking videos. about the time, too. Yeah. We were talking about lenses, and then we were talking about how weird the time is. And, and like, then it, it was like, it feels so oh, late. The time is weird. <laughs> like, uh, we're dang We're supposed it. to be busy right now. I guess that's the case. Uh, so I'm like not even ready. We didn't have anything. We kind of have a couple things prepared, but. Um, so the fun thing about labs, though, is you don't have to be prepared, right? Right. Like we want them to be candid and unscripted. This and is even way more. This is the epitome <laughs> of that um, for sure. So it will definitely be a we'll title it after depending on what tangent we get off on, if any. Um, we were trying to be a little more constructive with driving that conversation, but today it will be totally driven by Q and A. Any questions you pop in while we're live, and here we are. Yeah, get in the chat. I see a couple of people are watching, um, and and say hello. If you would like to do so, I'm actually going to share this video on Facebook too. Um. So anyway, did we get some? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, we got Doc from Sault Ste. Marie, Canada, or somewhere up there anyway. Um, did we get some questions come in from the internet? We did have some questions since last week. Excellent. You want to start there? Yeah, let's start there. And then uh, as And I don't even know if this question's more comments, and maybe it'll spark some more conversation. Okay. Um, so just want to, you know, acknowledge some of the comments that came in on our how to make boiled peanuts in an Instant Pot video, which is, <laughs> what, I guess it's like a year old now. Yeah, that's old, it's super yeah. timely, though, because this is the time of year. Like, I think when it cools off and you start thinking about, like, fair food and comfort food, like, that is a fun time. Um, a lot of, like, fall festival-driven things, um, boiled peanuts are staple. So, yep is definitely the time so we do have a video about how to make boiled peanuts in an instant pot so alan commented 
I love boiled peanuts. I'm going to have to try the Instant Pot. And I definitely recommend it because if you've ever cooked boiled peanuts, they take four ever yeah so how much time does it actually save you to use the instant pot like a it? day oh really yes yeah because it only takes like an hour and a half or something right i don't remember what we decided to cook them on i'd have to watch our video because it's been a while yeah and we've been all over we've actually laughed like oh we should do it again and make some more but we've not been in a place that sold raw peanuts so that's problematic yeah. Well, but we're not, back in the south. Yeah, so. we've not been in the south, and so now we're back in the south where they have that kind of stuff. Yeah. That thing pretty much saves us a lot of time. That instant pot saves us a lot of time cooking all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Works pretty good. What do you have? Uh, what are you drinking right here? What is this? Young's Double Chocolate Stout. Oh, man. That's really good. Young's Double Chocolate Stout is... Uh, is it double chocolate or is it just chocolate? There was, there is a Young's double chocolate. Have the purple one. Then I think that's Young's double chocolate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was no. like, wait, did I make the double? This is part really good. Up? This is. There's not many beers that we like the same. Charles Wallace. The reason <laughs> you just now received the notification <laughs> is because we were running late, because we forgot a what day it was. And B, lost all track of time because of daylight savings time coming off. I could go on a whole rant about why I think daylight savings time is stupid and we don't need it anymore and it's an antiquated thing that nobody should have to deal with. When I lived in Arizona, I lived in Arizona for 12 years um, and we didn't have daylight savings time there and it was fantastic and it didn't affect anything. Except how you have to remember to communicate with any other with the part rest of, of the, the world. country. That's the yeah. problem. So I do. Yeah. I mean, like, if we. I don't remember which is which. Like, which is the exception and which is what it would normally be? Are we not on daylight savings time now? So this is normal? I mean, getting dark at five o'clock is ridiculous. It's really hard, yeah. No, it is definitely really hard. But it's also hard at almost. I don't know what time has it been seven and mm -hmm. it's still dark like that's yeah. disturbing too. the thing is is we're going to get to a point here in the next four weeks where it's going to be dark when you get up in the morning and dark when you go to bed at night. like it's the, the days get short it's always enough. dark when i go to bed it's true not always you go to bed <laughs> early a lot of times <laughs> not um, that early. doc says that he's a big fan of murphy's and we oh are yeah, we too. like Murphy's we too. We are too. I think that would probably be so. This is um kind of specific. It's very chocolatey. Um, in fact, if you eat ice cream, you take a pint of this and then drink it down to about this far, where there's like a little bit in the top of room in the top of the glass or the cup or the mug or whatever drinking out of, and scoop some vanilla ice cream on top of here and have like a beer float. And it is actually so good. It's weird. It kind of... The beer does something weird to the ice cream. So it's a little funny. Because it doesn't do it like root beer. Root beer creams it. Beer has some other effect on it. But anyway, it, it's like it's fizzy almost. The ice cream gets fizzy. It's weird. But anyway... Is it because it's nitro or does it do that anyway? I don't know. Because I feel like a lot of people have like boozy shakes now. So maybe it's because it's nitro. Anyway, try it because it's actually pretty good. Vanilla ice cream on top of a Young's yeah. Double Chocolate Stout. That being said, Murphy's is probably... Guinness is like if there's nothing else and you want a stout. I like Guinness though. Guinness is good, but Murphy's is better. I, I agree with you, Doc. And We really like nitro though. We like anything with nitro in it. My stomach doesn't do well with beer, um, but if it's nitrogen-based beer instead of carbon uh, CO2-based beer, uh, my stomach does better with it. So we favor it for sure. Um, Doc said he never used his Instant Pot for boiled peanuts. Um, yeah, so try it. It's really cool. Um, Leslie has, there's a video on our channel, on this channel. Mm -hmm. um, about how to do it and how long it takes. I want to say it's like an hour and a half. Or yeah, it's so. not it's long. not very long. 
Um, but the amount of... Smaller batches, of course, because, you know, a lot of times if you make bull peanuts, you make them in maybe like a turkey size big pot. Um, so you make a, a lesser quantity, but you can also do multiple batches in the same day because of the time. Yep. It was really easy. Guinness is way better in Ireland. Isn't it warm, though? I don't Irish think beers? Yeah, I don't think their beer is cold. I don't know. Because that goes back to the whole nobody had ice thing. So everybody just drank their beer warm, which I can't do. I can't do. Now that we've gone on a tangent, upon tangent, are there any other questions that we should be getting to? Should this be a we? I don't know. Um, questions. I mean, I can just proceed through the comments. Do it. I don't know that they're all questions. Uh, do a couple of them, yeah. I do think it's funny. Um, from our live last week, Bryant said, I just realized this comes on live during Walking Dead time in my time zone. So I guess that means <laughs> Bryant won't be joining us yeah. live. Apparently. <laughs> Super funny. Unless he screws up. Like we did. Like we did. And misses Walking Dead for some reason. Yep. And he ends up here. Uh, Doc says that actually the beer is cellar temp, which would make sense. So probably like oh, so still cool. Fifty degrees, probably. Yeah, that, yeah. Does that sound right? Like cellar temperature sounds kind of fifty. The difference between a cellar and a basement. Um. Well, it depends on like a root cellar. Is they call a root cellar because it's dirt walls, and oh. you could actually have like trees growing in. Um, I used to have one of those in one of my houses in Michigan that was built in like 1905. And so then what's the difference between a root cellar and like a storm shelter? Uh, probably nothing except for a storm shelter probably has, um, like heavier duty walls and stuff. So it doesn't, root cellars are a lot more damp. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, because they're, they're open, they're more, yeah. I had one like that, it was a house, it was built in like 1905, and so only half of it had stone, like big hewn stones holding up the basement, but then the other half was a still dirt, hmm. and the floor was all dirt. Like it w wasn't, it was only walls on a couple sides, and then everything else was dirt, and then the floor was dirt. It was crazy. Hmm. And it was a fuel oil burned furnace and it was terrible <laughs> yeah so we had um so a video that we shared quite a few places and um we're just trying to kind of push to to test in some different audiences is about our internet solution that we finally found and kind of locked in so this was on this video it, um Fagan Piano Studio says, I'm a piano teacher and I've been teaching exclusively online since March. My husband and I are planning to move to full-time RV life early next year and I've been doing lots of research into internet options as I need Zoom-like access for six to eight hours per day. That I is a it. lot. It's a lot of meetings though. Yeah, Leslie isn't on Zoom that much. But Zoom doesn't need that much. No, Zoom's not a high consume. Zoom doesn't consume as much as what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, Zoom is not. And actually, right now, we're not using our regular internet because our regular internet kind of sucks in the area that we are this week. Mm -hmm. um, which is, it has not been like that. This, this is, is the first time. This is the first time ever. So we learned in California, and then this week has reinforced... That the number of bars that you get does not equate to the actual coverage and or speed that you get. Right. More so speed. So it's not, you're not just talking about coverage anymore. You could have... Four bars. Four bars and nothing happening. Yeah. So you could text, you could phone, yeah. make phone calls, but your data, <clears throat> based on the infrastructure around you, for actual data... Um, is basically non-existent. It kind of works sometimes in the day, but as a consistent thing, like we haven't watched TV. We haven't, because our internet, our TV is all internet. Like we don't have any satellite dish or anything. So we just use like um, 
I have like a $5 a month Hulu thing, Netflix, Amazon Prime, stuff like that. We can't do any of that stuff here this week, and just on our phones, um, except for on our phones. And, well, we have a couple of hotspots that we're using for work, but our normal internet doesn't have a data cap where all these other hotspots do have a data cap, so we're trying to kind of keep them keep them minimized so we can get well we did get through the work week so i guess it yeah doesn't we matter. did and it was better than i thought so it wasn't terrible um we also had a recent video the jk versus jl video we had a couple of comments on that charles says it is so beautiful a jeep is quite versatile i really like the wranglers really nice drone and first person riding footage Stay safe and be blessed. Charles is actually watching right now. Oh, cool. Hey, and Charles. he said that he saw an RV towing a square body Jeep. He had to catch up just to see if it was us. <laughs> he didn't think it was because was, we weren't in northern Kentucky. Um, yeah, we yeah we haven't been in Kentucky for... That's super cool, though. And then Zephyr, same video, said, you honestly have the best off-road and or overland platform Jeep has released. The front axle in the Recon is the strongest factory front axle ever offered factory. I'm a bit biased, though. I just bought a two-door Recon myself. Yeah, so that, <clears throat> the front axle strength in those Wranglers has always been a thing. Ever since, all the way, going all the way back. Um, I had a Dana... I had a Dana 30 in one of mine, and I broke it a lot of times until I replaced it with lots of expensive parts. And this thing has basically those expensive parts in it already, which is cool. Um, Doc wants to know if I watched the quote-unquote parade from Imola today. Um, from where? Formula One. Imola. Imola in Italy. I did watch it. It wasn't exactly a parade because my driver blew a tire and crashed out so you know but yeah there was not much overtaking it was definitely a hard track to overtake on and it was it was cool though those old-fashioned tracks i mean that's where Ayrton senna died so um, those that old, makes it cool well there's a lot of history there and it's an old school track like they don't make them like that anymore gotcha. um you know the the architecture and the dimensions of the corners and everything is all different it's smaller everything's narrower it's kind of cool um do you have a boosted broadcast tv antenna in your rv we have ours for when internet is sketchy so um and chad also asked if we passed through West Virginia because we he saw a rig like ours. <laughs> no, we have not been there. Um, no. I love that y'all are looking that out for us. That is awesome, man. I love that you're looking out for us. So, oh, and the other thing, speaking of that, Scott, over on Patreon, we are every week trying to update everybody where we are because, like, all of the other videos and stuff are kind of lagging behind, so... Um, on the Patreon, that's what we're, we're doing is like every week updating. That way, if you do want to meet up with us or something, you can, um, <clears throat> um, anyway, so Dennis wants to know if we have a boosted broadcast TV antenna. I do. Um, I have a wine guard and it is, has an amplifier in it. It's good for about 25 miles. Um, so, like, here, we're just probably outside, because we're outside of Birmingham, like 35 miles. So, all I get is a couple of those, like, late night worship channels, and QVC, and whatever the old TV channel that has, like, Andy Griffith and Green Acres and stuff i get that channel but i don't i don't even get any network channels here this week this is a weird the spot we're in this week is weird it's um we're like an hour and a half from atlanta we're like a half hour from birmingham and there's like 
nothing here. Like the there well, there are two very cool things within about fifteen or twenty minutes. Um, one is the uh, Barber Motorsports Park and Museum. So that's a must do thing every time we come here. And then of course Talladega Super Speedway is like 10 minutes away. So I think all these RV parks are pretty much because of that. <laughs> right. Um, and I think there's a lot of industry that people permanently live here. So like the RV park that we're in right now is 99. I don't, I don't know that there's, I haven't seen any temporary. I, I think people. this is the only spot I've seen that. I know. That's like, what I think too. Maybe so. we're going to move. Like it was empty when we got here and we're going to move. I don't think anybody else moves. Yeah. No, I think everybody else lives here, but there's a huge Honda plant. They make, um, what do we decide to make the trucks like? So the small body trucks. Yeah. yeah. Ridgeline, Honda pilot, mm -hmm. um, the van, all that stuff. There's a Honda plant like 10 minutes from here too. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that there's a bunch of industry where they have people come in and work for, you know, contractors and stuff. And I feel like that's what a lot of these RV parks here are. Plus the seasonal stuff, like all the racetracks and all that, that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a weird spot. There's no real reason to be here other than probably those three reasons. And I'm curious too. So like when you drive to the racetrack, for instance, it looks like everything is closed. Like it's been closed though. So it, it's very, I don't know. I mean, if I didn't know that races still happen there, I would think that was an abandoned racetrack even looking at it. Yeah, because it doesn't look, like if you go to Charlotte Motor Speedway, it's beautiful. Right. It's beautiful. And um, it's like all manicured and gorgeous and everything. This looks like, Talladega looks like it's not been anything there for a long time. And like tumbleweeds in the parking lot. Yeah, I was just deal. really <laughs> surprised. Weird. Like even if they haven't used it this season, it, it definitely used it looks. twice this season. Yeah, but it looks like that's the part that surprises me because it looks like there's been nothing here for years. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we're out here kind of looks like that though. I'd give you that. Birmingham is a really pretty city. Like when you drive around, it's hilly and there's like, I don't know. It's, it's really neat because Except for the little downtown part, you don't really feel like you're in a city. Like, it's just you're always in the woods. Like, there's just curvy roads and hills, and it's really neat. But we've been trying to find stuff to do here, and it's been a different... This has been an interesting week, for sure. Um, As we started off with. Yeah, it's been an interesting week. And the, so even to laugh about the park, like they also must not be in high demand because we decided instead of fighting and changing and moving and dealing with the weekend, that's why we didn't go anywhere this weekend. We just decided to extend our stay before we have some work done. And it was just like, no big deal. I have a motorhome appointment to have some work done that there will be a video out that video will be on Patreon on Thursday. Oh, wow. Quick turnaround. Yeah. I'm going to shoot it. You know, we'll shoot it Tuesday, and I'll edit it Wednesday, and it'll be up there Thursday. I'm going to knock it out. Um, but anyways, we're having some work done on the motorhome. Pretty cool video. I think it's going to make a big difference for my life. I'm, I'm excited about it. But it's on Tuesday, so we got this weird gap. And it's only 60 miles from here. So it's this weird, like, do you even move? Like, there's nowhere to stay close to there again because we're in this weird void between Birmingham and and Atlanta. Like, it's this weird. And then you don't want to go too far because we're only going after we get the motorhome repaired uh, or upgraded. We're only going another 150 miles past that. So it's a weird kind of transition week that's what threw us all off with our little time frame here yep yeah it's it's crazy been to talladega several times 
he says fant fantastic speed track but amenities and such are sketchy yeah I, I feel like amenity is not really a word you use much around here it's just a pretty simple place and the funny thing is is i've always thought that so i've been i've driven past here a lot of times uh, yeah and you you see the huge speedway from the interstate and you're just like whoa there's talladega and you just think like you just can't see it right but there's nothing even on the interstate through there like there's no mm -mm. places to stay or fast food like there's nothing there yep and i was just like it must be on the other side of the track like you know because talladega like the city proper is actually south of the track i don't even think the track is in the city um but we just went through the actual city this week too and i was like okay <laughs> so i don't know and it's like ghost town on the the main highway that the track is on um yep and, and i understand that like when there's not an event going on it's different right like but we've again we've been to charlotte when there's no events going on but there's still people there and places to stay and things to do and this is just like the er darlington track is like that it's like in the middle of nowhere also and the there's town, like a bojangles close by because it's a bojangles, bojangles race or bojangles, something yeah <laughs> um but the cool thing about birmingham and we'll talk more about this next week because i'll have that's not true because darlington had remember the people we met were staying right there and they were like little restaurants and bars like yeah, but it's like one little strip of stuff. It's well, There's I guess it's stuff. more of more than. Um, so next week we will tell you some more stuff about. Um, we actually did find a bunch of really cool stuff to do here. Um, that was like Alabama's version of really cool stuff. Uh so we'll tell you about some of that stuff next week we did get some really cool photos and stuff we'll show you some of that uh, but um barber motorsports park is here and that is a number one class a situation there it is beautiful it is per it's amazing it's it's a motorcycle museum so i'm like in heaven like i took tons of pictures so watch our instagram for that because you're gonna see uh, tons of them. Birmingham is the rust belt of the South. Well, it's in, it's an iron town. So that's interesting because I, I actually didn't know, this is just something I learned this week. I didn't know that there were such big iron deposits this far South in the country. I'm originally from the real rust belt and of the United States. I'm originally from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And so um, the copper mines, the gold mines, the silver mines, and mostly the iron ore mines that uh, like Empire and all those big, big, big strip mines um, that fed the car industry for a hundred years were in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. There's huge deposits of minerals and iron and all kinds of other stuff there. And they would take it and put it on the iron ore boats and then send it through the Sioux locks and then back down and it would go to like Lake Erie and Pittsburgh and stuff. And that's where they would make it into steel and then it would turn into cars. But so I just didn't realize that there was this much industry at one point in iron ore this far south in the country. It was just, that was interesting. It was definitely here though. Oh yeah, big time. Because there's, like, abandoned furnaces everywhere. Mm -hmm. Going all the way back to before the Civil War, like, yeah. And there were way more before the Civil War. A lot of, we learned yesterday that a lot of the mills, like, to make food and everything, all got burned down in the Civil War. Like, everything was, so. And that's dang also. Dang Sherman. Dang Sherman. It wasn't him. Oh. It wasn't him. It was uh, some other guy. It wasn't him, though. All right. Sherman was over by uh, Savannah and Augusta and Atlanta. 
But you think it was somebody else it was somebody there else. also? Because he, he said it was... No, it was somebody else. He told me the oh, name and I forgot. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there was a whole corridor of things happening from Mobile up to Birmingham and then up to Southern Kentucky. Hmm. Yeah. As part of the Civil War. Like, there was... It was a different group of people. I've learned more about history since we started this journey than I have in my whole life. <laughs> oh, you mean like this whole journey in general, like our motorhome journey? Mm-hmm. But it's because I've been curious about it and then I do research because yeah. seeing things is different than... Than reading about it in a book. Right. And um, yeah. I've learned, so if they would have taught me history from the perspective of people... I think I would have loved it the whole time. But I don't care about dates and places. But if you'd have told me the story of the people. And not just like what they did that was historic. Like who were they and how did they get to be who they were. And then what happened to them. Like, Yeah and I think also you're right. Putting it's, It puts a different scale on it. That's one of the things we love about doing this. Is... Driving down the road and looking for brown signs. We talk about that. Looking for brown signs because they're always like the historical whatever. And and it doesn't cost money. The transportation to get there is the only cost. It doesn't cost money usually to pull over to the side of the road. Read one of those brown signs or one of those historical markers. And then take a couple pictures. And then usually what we do is get back in the car and she will Google you know, whatever, oh, this is what happened at this in this area. And then a lot of times that'll be like, oh, there's another, um, you know, historical thing five miles from here that's connected to that, that tells more of the story. And then we go do that. That's what we did today. We just kind of, when we left here today to go explore, we didn't really have, we had one place we wanted to stop that we'll tell you about next week. But we did not really have a plan. We got done with that one stop, and then it was like, I guess we'll just drive around and look for brown signs mm -hmm. and see what we see, because I don't know what, you know, I don't know what there is around here. And we've been trying, doing that all week, and we've, yesterday was really good, too. Yesterday, we found out some really cool stuff. Um, so, to continue a conversation that we had earlier, mm -hmm. and for our patrons, yeah. Um, I think we're going to, let's do a video tomorrow afternoon when we get back. And that way we can include all the things we did on this trip. Okay. More in a conversation because okay. I don't want to say it ends today because we still have tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't know what we'll discover tomorrow because it's kind of an unknown. So we'll go, we'll do our uncut video for Patreon tomorrow and upload it. Okay. If that's okay. We usually do a travel day. That is still day before travel day, so it's still applicable. It'll work. Yeah. Um, but let's catch them up on what we did. Yeah. So over on Patreon, what we've been doing is um, either the day before we travel or on a travel day, we tell everybody is what. Is there a link you can throw up? Um, yeah. We tell everybody what um, we did in this week. Like we're in Birmingham or outside of Birmingham. This is all the stuff we found here. And then we show you a couple of photos and this and that in case you ever want to do any of that kind of stuff. And, of course, next week on our live, we'll probably tell you some more about it and stuff. But we try to give the folks over there on Patreon a little bit more of a more of an uncut and um, up-to-date, you know, kind of thing. So that's, what, that's what's happening there. Um, hang on. I'm putting the link in right now. Oh, I thought you were going to do it on the app. Oh, I did that so they could click on it, but... Yeah, no, that's is. cool, too. I didn't think of that. That's it right there. We're just thinking two different things. Two different ways to do Ooh, it. So many ways. Is there any other comments over there? Uh, not, not so much? Mm -mm. Okay. We caught cool. up on all the comments on older videos. Yeah, cool. Um, Doc says that Cleveland Cliffs is where his kinfolk from Marquette worked. I have a lot of friends that like all my friends parents worked there 
either there or the university. Hmm. Cleveland Cliffs was the, which is Empire Mine, and yeah, they had, and a couple other big mines. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, that was one of the big industries of the time. So, yeah, it's been an interesting week. Oh, and I guess we didn't talk about, so, uh, what day was Hurricane Day? Was that Wednesday? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. So, or actually it was Tuesday night. Um, Hurricane Zeta hit Louisiana. And by the time it got here, it was a tropical storm with 60 mile an hour winds. I heard that there were 75 mile an hour gusts. We somehow, I don't know how, pretty much got spared most of that. We were, it was not cool though. It was, um, I did not sleep at all. It was pouring rain so hard. And so like every few minutes I would like want to get up and make sure we didn't have a leak or something. So, um, yeah, it was a little stressful. I did not sleep at all and it was so windy and it would, when you're in a motorhome, it's kind of scary when it's windy because the thing really, really sways because you're on a, you're on suspension, you know, like the thing moves and what's really crazy is when those straight line winds hit the side of the motorhome, it didn't like move it. It like smacked it. It was the craziest thing. It was like somebody was slapping the outside of the motorhome and then moving the whole thing. It was really, really weird. I'd never felt that before. We That's the first, probably the worst weather that we've yeah. been in. And it is scary this. because in the South, a notorious thing is that happens is you know most people think about tornadoes but far more than tornadoes is straight line winds which do like destruction just like a tornado would but very unexpected and unpredictably right um so yeah when you're feeling that wind and so we were lucky we drove around you know we heard that people we didn't have power for the whole day yeah, also was we something we dealt with this so week. So we ran the generator for a whole day. Um, yep. So, you know, and then we heard that some people in the area, and, you know, you see, like, news reports, like, from the southeast in various amounts of people don't have power. But then we heard locally that there was pockets of people that still didn't have power. Today. And we were like, oh, you know, it must have been worse than we thought. But we drove around the last couple of days, and there was significant damage yeah. very close to us. Yeah, like a mile or half very a mile close from to us. us. In, I'm talking like huge trees over roads where people took a, a chainsaw and like my Jeep fit through, but like a big truck wouldn't fit through because they were literally just cutting the trees just Making enough a pass, yeah. to get a path through so people could drive. Like it, a ton of roads like that. And there's power trucks out here still mm -hmm. today. We were driving around. And of course there's a freeze warning tonight. So I think there was a oh, lot right. of push right. to yep. to get some, get people back up and Cause running. Cause it's not warm here. Yeah. So, and we had no, no leaks, no damage really. There was a bunch of crap like wet leaves and stuff all stuck to the outside of the motorhome the next day. Cause it was like blowing. And the other thing's crazy is um, the wind would come from a certain direction and then 20 minutes later it's coming mm -hmm. from a different direction. Yeah, because it's still a swirling storm yeah. that's yeah. coming slowly over you. We were just really grateful there was no tornadoes. The temperature was high enough, I think, because it was still 70... It was weird. It was like during the day, it was like 72 degrees. And at night it was like 71 degrees. It was the more the weather, the, all the wind and the weather was happening was actually really warm. So fortunately we didn't have any like cold drop offs and tornadoes popping up or, um, anything like that in Georgia. A lot of times what we'll get is microbursts where the top layer, it's not like a tornado. So a tornado is where you have, a cold front and a warm front come together and when they hit they spin a microburst is like where you have 
uh, a pocket of cold air. I don't remember which way it is, but anyways, there's hot air on the top and cold air on the bottom, or vice versa. I can't remember which. But basically what happens is the air, it's cold air on the top and hot air on the bottom. And the cold air wants to go down, and so it, like, slams down. It's called a microburst, so it'll have, like, 85 mile an hour winds straight down and then it'll blow everything out which could happen around a tornado or hurricane too around here especially but it didn't everything was fine we it was scary though i mean i think it did happen somewhere well it did happen but not here yeah um which is the other thing we were stressed about is not stressed about but Keeping an eye on, let's just say that. <laughs> this RV park that we're in is literally surrounded. surrounded by the, what is it? Kusa. The Kusa River. And it goes all the way around. So we literally have water all the way around. And so if it floods or if it flash floods, then you're also worried about that. But none of those things happened. So, um, you know. We made it. But I would not do it on purpose. And if you have the chance to move out of the way of a tropical storm or a hurricane and you have an RV, I would definitely recommend it. Um, and I would definitely... The video that's coming out on YouTube this week that's already on Patreon is all about stuff you check like all the time, like maintenance. And I would definitely be keeping up on that stuff all the time and I'm glad that we do because we didn't have any leaks we didn't have any issues um, oh and we also got ants this week <laughs> so we will be updating you we bought some stuff on Amazon and hopefully that stuff works and we'll be able to get rid of some bugs because we got ants this week which is a constant fight with RVing because there's bugs everywhere. So we will definitely keep you up to date on that also. Uh, we were lucky with only thunder, sleet, and snow in West Texas. Good. No, that's good, man. Um, I live in a mobile home and I've experienced the slapping sound before yeah it's crazy i that's something i never expected that is something i never expected was that slap where it literally felt like somebody was just like smacking the side of the thing and it would pop like that it was weird super weird but we're all good so well i appreciate everybody uh your patience and you not Knowing that we were actually doing a live because we forgot and got mixed up on our days and all that kind of stuff. It was literally like 9.25 Eastern time and I was like, well, let me grab all the stuff. And we like threw it all together. I think we were, what, 10 minutes late or something? But I ended up Oh, out. yay. Dennis thought it was Bob Wire too when he was a kid. <laughs> oh, my God. So if you're watching this later and don't see the live comments, um, so <coughs> I'm sorry, very coughing southern your thing, barbed wire um, around farms and etc. Um, we were oh in Florida, I think. We were in Florida taking pictures, like some random, like pulled off and took pictures. And I took a picture, I saw my Instagram with my hand and some barbed wire and I was I told him the story for the first time I was like um so as a kid um I always thought it was bob wire and he was like what um so I posted on Instagram and nobody like related to me I was like well maybe I was the only one that thought it was bob wire so thanks Dennis <laughs> wow <laughs> y'all are that's funny anyway I think that's about it what I got. Yeah, that's funny. I took it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out. Uh, make sure you definitely go check out our Patreon because we got some cool stuff going on over there. And then 
Thursday, there will be a video coming out about RV maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's coming out Thursday. And then on Thursday, there will be a new video coming out on Patreon about some upgrades that we're doing to the RV that I'm very, very, very excited about. So um, we're actually going to the factory where they make the thing and having, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Um, we're going to the factory where they make the thing, they install it, and then they test it for us and make sure everything's good and send us on our way. And it's not supposed to take very long and I'll be able to, it is a driving performance enhancement. I will just tell you that much. And we will, um, I'll be able to know hopefully right away. If it sounds it like made we're gonna give the RV like a little blue pill. We are. <laughs> it's blue <laughs> anyway that's funny um so just before we go um i just have to know that there's more people agreeing with the whole bob wire conversation so um and then zephyr popped on and he's talking about the weather in um, the panhandle of texas and i think he popped on he said thanks for the mention earlier about the jeep because oh, yeah. i'm typing back and letting people know responding to their comment when we're talking about it live I don't know when they're going to see that, but looks like Zephyr saw it pretty quickly. So thanks for I popping on. I appreciate you um, talking about that stuff. So one of the things I'm trying to do is really kind of, I mean, we're really just sharing stuff we're doing. But also, I want to know what people want to see because there's a lot of the stuff that we take. Here's what happens. This is our life. Sometimes we take it for granted, like what people are curious about or what they want to know about, or they're trying to do this in some, maybe they're going to buy a motorhome next week. Maybe they're planning to do it in five years. Maybe you're just curious. I don't know. Um, but we live this every day. So a lot of times I'll forget that it's special or I'll forget that it's a weird question or whatever. So uh, your input on these videos really helps. And the reason I brought it up with uh, Zephyr is because a lot of people love the Jeep content. And so if you want to see more of that, let me know. Because it is a subset of what we do. Obviously, we use it every day to go off-roading and go exploring. And um, I've built probably a half a dozen overlanding rigs and two really good rock crawlers so the whole off-road thing and stuff is really fun and i haven't done much with that jeep with that but we've just lately started to use it a lot more for that stuff and so if you want to see more of that content let us know because it's really fun it's really fun to shoot too um you know technical like how to work on stuff i mean my other channel i do that every day and obviously showing you stuff about how to work on the motorhome or whatever to do, but all this other stuff, do, going and doing things is really fun. And it's fun to shoot. So just let us know. That's um, a great question. Uh, well, so first, while you read that, yeah. first last popped on and said, hello from South Jersey. I didn't know that was considered the armpit of the country. Um, and he watches because his wife and him want to hit the road. Oh, that's awesome, dude. He watches our cool. other channel too. Yeah, very cool, man. Um, do you acquire mileage on the Jeep from flat towing? At first, last already answered that, actually. Um, you do not. And so that actually makes it... It makes it... That's not first, last. Zephyr asked that. I know, but first, last actually answered it. Oh, um, oh, oh. I actually... It's, it sort of sucks because you have to basically keep two logbooks um, for... The, t the miles that you put on the Jeep when you're driving it, which is what the odometer does, but it doesn't register your towing miles because it's an electronic speed sensor and the car is off. <clears throat> so you have to keep track of all your towing miles for tire rotations and wheel bearings and brakes. It uses brakes the entire time you're towing it because of the braking system that we have. So it uses the Jeep brakes to stop it um, and it's not, it's kind of hard on them actually. Um, 
So there's some stuff you have to kind of keep up. So for, from a maintenance perspective, yeah. it's good to know those towing lines. Yeah, miles. yeah, keep track of that. And and so what it makes you do is basically what I do is how many miles do I put on the motorhome? I add that to however many miles I put on a Jeep. So because we only drive this thing once a week or less. Um, and so I keep track of the miles on the motorhome and then I keep track of the miles on the Jeep and I add them together. Um, so when we get back to Georgia next week, I got to do an oil change on this. I got to do an oil change on that. I got to get, we got new tires on the Jeep, but I got to get a new spare, um, and rotate the tires because even though the Jeep only has like 2,500 miles on it since I bought the Jeep or bought the tires, it's got another thousand or fifteen hundred miles of towing miles on it that now I have to rotate the tires. So you know, for example, that's that's an example. So yeah, super cool, man. Um, this has been fun. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. For sure. And we really appreciate it a lot. And um, I guess we will see you probably on my. Now uh, we'll see you Thursday because we, yeah, we'll see you Thursday. We'll see you Thursday on Music and Mascara.